Hello, now you may remember my dear friend Shana, two years ago we were doing a video about van life in California. A year ago we did the video about Shana moving from the United States to Portugal and why would you do that? So we'll link to those videos in the description below here. So here we are a year on with an update, a Living Simply video on Shana and for a start you obviously love living in Portugal because you've just bought this apartment, <laughs> haven't you? Yes, um, I can be a little commitment phobic, but I made a commitment to this country, um, found this apartment, fell in love with this town. It fits me perfectly and I'm very excited to be here. So you said fall in love with this town. We're not in Lisbon, are we? No, we're not. Where are we? <laughs> we are in a place about um, 45 minutes away by train from Lisbon or 20, 25 minutes by car, uh, a place called Setubal or Stubal as a lot of the locals call it. Yeah. So I'm no longer on the river Teju that borders Lisbon. Mm -hmm. I'm on the Sadu River. Yeah. And I'm in a, it's a bona fide city. It's just a small city with all the amenities one could want, arts, culture, great food, yeah. walkable, mm -hmm. and about half the cost of living in Lisbon. Yeah, because Lisbon could be quite expensive, can't it? Yes, and way fewer tourists uh, here yeah. too, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, it's a really nice city. So obviously, you love living here obviously portugal has lived up to your expectations what have you found to be maybe some unforeseen challenges of moving <laughs> to a new country like portugal well if you know me and you know me I know you. um I know i'm you. i'm a crazy researcher yeah. and i am fortunate that even though i spend a lot of time doing a lot of research and kind of figuring things out talking to people uh, how that benefits me is that I didn't have as many surprises as maybe some of the other expats I know who mm -hmm. have moved here. Yeah. Um, so Portugal for me has lived up to everything that I thought it would, including the challenges. Yeah. But that's part of the reason I did this because I, you know, as I maybe mentioned last year, I want to keep my gray matter sharp. I want to challenge myself. I want to be present and intentional about everything I do. And here, with the language challenges, no, I don't speak Portuguese yet. Yeah. This year, this year. Um, yeah. But my comprehension is pretty good. Yeah. Is that you cannot be on autopilot. No. So like day-to-day -day living, you know, it's not traveling, it's living, can be very exhausting. Um, you know. Yeah, just think, for example, today you had a phone call, I know, one of those automated <laughs> phone call things. The, <laughs> Yep. We don't know what it was, but maybe from the electricity company? Yes, yeah, so you know, I answered it because I'm waiting on a delivery and a few utilities situations to be straightened out, still don't have internet here. Um, and I understood enough to know that it was the electric company yeah. calling mm -hmm. and that if I wanted to say yes, I could press one, and if I wanted to say no, no I would press two. two. But I don't know what I'm saying yes or no to. What was the question, yeah. So I hung up, and yeah. you know, as my friends in Lisbon say, if it's important, they'll send an email, yeah. and then I can run it through yeah. Google Translate. Yeah. yeah. So what about friends? Have you found it easy to make friends, and not just, I mean, with other English speakers, have you made friends, Portuguese friends, while you, has it been easy? Or you know, for me, I'm. I'm tempted to say surprisingly, but it, for whatever reason, I have had very good luck at meeting locals. And in fact, I have people that um, I've been into their homes. They've set up, for instance, my moving situation for me, made sure that the moving company I was using was reputable and yeah. you know that they would be here on time and all of those things. And um, I have talked to other expats, English speakers, who one person who told me, you know, you'll never be invited into a Portuguese person's house. You'll never really make friends with them. They're lovely, friendly. Well, within four months, I was already going over for tea and coffee you're to all, friends. You're yeah, already yeah. in Portuguese friends' Oh, yeah, kitchens. absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I have one friend, he checks on me every day to see how I'm doing, how I'm getting along. And, yeah. um, you know, they're like, if you need anything, we're a short drive away, let so us know. So you've had a lot so, of support from people so in much, Portugal. So much. The yeah. Portuguese people, as you've seen and as, so as you lovely. know, oh my gosh, so lovely. And 
I feel so fortunate to um, not only have these friends and to be deepening these friendships, but even just the casual people on the street that yeah, we've met. Just You've so seen polite. over the just last so couple polite, of days, kind, helpful, accommodating yeah. with yeah. the food we want to eat and all you know all of that. <laughs> and food, yeah. so that for me has turned out to be a very huge positive. Um, I, in fact, I just had a gal message me via Instagram saying she lives in Lisbon. She's been there longer than I have and said she's having a terrible time meeting people. How did I do it? And, you know, my heart goes out to her and I gave her a few suggestions. But I think there's something to be said for getting away from the capital city as well, because, you know, you've got an influx of travelers, which is fine. Yeah, We're all yeah. travelers at mm -hmm. one point or another. Um, and then you have sort of the expat ghettos where, you know, yeah. the English speakers congregate. And it does, I think, make it harder to meet Portuguese people because they get pushed out of those because areas. Because you've never lived in those ghettos. You've always lived in, I wouldn't say edgy places, but you've lived away from those sort of little enclaves. Of Absolutely. Because, I mean, the last place you were at in Almada yeah. was 100% Portuguese, wasn't it? Oh, right. But, you, and right. but also, I'd say you became a local. Absolutely. So you got to know your neighbors, you got to know the local cafe owners, the right. shopkeepers, all this kind of thing. Right. So, you, you know, for people who are watching this and thinking, well, how does she do it? Right. Uh, from a viewer's perspective, I would say the way you did it was purely because you you threw yourself in there and became a local. Right. And that was with intention. Mm. I, I mean, yes, would it have been easier in some ways to plop down in Lisbon and have, you know, 20 great vegan restaurants available to me and all the best coffees and all of that? Sure, that would have mm. been easy in that sense. However, you know, this is my third move in a little over yeah. a year <laughs> here. And the first two places I lived in were two different neighborhoods in Almada, which is mm. a working class community. It's where Portuguese people live. Mm. Slowly, others are starting to move there. But when I hit the ground running, it was, you know, Portuguese all the way. I mean, I had to really be on my toes to try to make out mm. what people were yeah. saying to me. And there were, you know, all the people in um, the country in general, if they're about 50 years old or younger, pretty much speak English or have yeah. a good grasp of it, certainly more so in Lisbon. Where I was living, people just looked at me like, mm, I'm not sure what you're saying. Yeah. And so I think that's what increased my comprehension as well yeah. as my ability to fit in with yeah. the locals in a yeah, better way. Sure. So the other thing we've talked about is, is uh, a lot of people expect that you've done a lot of sightseeing, a lot of traveling, yeah. Yeah. you've been to Porto, you've been down to the Algarve. What's the reality of how much of Portugal you've seen? The reality is I have not seen anything more than the greater Lisbon, Stubal region, which is kind of considered a greater, mm -hmm. you know, region. Yeah. Um, and again, that was done in a strategic way because my intention was to make this country my home. So I'm not here for two weeks blitzing around like crazy, seeing one town in one night and another town yeah. in another day. I knew the region I wanted to make my home uh, based on climate and other favorable things for me. Yeah. So I knew Porto wasn't it, although I'm excited to go visit. Yeah. It wasn't an, an imperative for me to do it immediately because yeah. I wanted to settle in, make a home, make friends, start to build a community. Yeah. And then I'll use this as my launching pad to travel yeah. around. There's also one of the other things we were talking about is the fact that even though you're in a beautiful country like this and it's nice and sunny now even though it's only 2nd of January, <laughs> you still have to go grocery shopping, you still have to do laundry, you right. still got to go down the electricity company office and sort your bill And out. sit there for two years, uh, yeah, two years, two, <laughs> two years, two, <laughs> felt like two years, two hours. Yeah. But, yeah. and that's the thing, those things that I would do in a day back in California that would be second nature and I wouldn't even think about it. I'd pick up the phone and call the electric company, say, hey, turn off my utilities here, set me up here, what do I need to do? Everything is line by line. What are they telling me? What, you know, and by the time I'm done accomplishing one task, I'm exhausted yeah. for the day. That's another interesting thing you just said. In California, you would just pick up the phone and call someone. Mm -hmm. And I remember in a previous conversation we've had, you've said here, because you're in a different country and you don't fluently speak the language, 
you prefer to go to an office and speak to someone face to face. Yes, so yeah. everything is everything. really labor and mm. energy intensive. And I also don't have a car. No. So if my local office is, you know, a 20 minute ride away on the bus or I have to mm -hmm. take two buses or, you know, fortunately moving down here everything is within walking distance, mm. but everything is an event. Yeah. It's not just a offhand um, you know, errand or task that you do. It's yeah, like, yeah. okay, I intentionally have to go to the uh, energy company today and I have to accomplish this. Yeah, so mm. whereas you've done it in two minutes in California, <laughs> it's going to take you half a day. Have you mm. found it easy to get around without a car? Um, I have, and again, that's another intentional thing. I, uh, you know, I'm focused on minimizing not only my expenses, but the attention I have to pay to details like mm. paying insurance, paying for petrol, uh, maintenance, wondering if my car's been scratched or hit, yeah. you know. Mm. So I just eliminated all of that by moving here. So yeah. that's another reason I didn't choose a rural area to live mm. in or a smaller village. I wanted to be in a metropolitan area that is well connected by a variety of transit. And I have an amazing pass that allows me to see the entire region for 40 euro a month. Mm. And that's ferries, buses, Metro, train, everything. 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 Um, so I don't have to think about it. I have it in my back pocket. I just get on when I want to get on and it's a done deal. Freedom of the city. Yeah, it's so, it's, freedom of the region. And yeah. that's the thing. And I have a lot of freedom by not having a car because I'm yeah. not worried about what's going on outside, yeah. you know, where yeah. it's parked, what what's happening with it. Yeah. And you don't feel ever like you came and met me at the bus station late mm -hmm. at night. It's not you don't feel mm -hmm. unsafe here. No, not at all. I and never feel unsafe in Portugal. It's such a lovely place. No, and when we were talking about it, I thought, you know, as I went to meet you in the late later evening, I was like, yeah, it's probably maybe in other places. Like I think about in California walking to a Greyhound bus station at 9 or 10 p.m. at night. And that is not yeah, the best it. thing for a solo woman to be doing. And, you know, I took my dog. I pay attention. I mean, I don't just throw all caution to the wind. But... Yeah there isn't that edge here yeah. of that impending like danger around the corner kind no, of thing. No, it just no, isn't. No, it's brilliant. So that's another reason as yeah, a solo woman yeah. I, I picked Portugal. So you've been here now, you did about, I know you did about a year's worth of research, you've now been here for a year mm -hmm. and you are now using that knowledge mm -hmm. and you've launched a resource for people who are yes. thinking of moving to Portugal. Yes. So tell us a little yes. bit more about that. Okay, so I started this, it's sort of my accidental side gig. You know, I'm a writer, author, consultant um, for nonprofits and businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, but I started this side business because so many people were requ requesting my help. And so I started a little business called So You Want to Move to Portugal. And what it is, it's a one-to-one -one opportunity to have an hour conversation via Skype, or if you happen to be here in person, or like yeah. I did one in California when I was visiting uh, last month, and yeah. uh, my client happened to be there. And the difference between what I'm offering and what, let's say, a migration assistant would be offering is it's not legal ad advice, no. it's not financial advice, it's not even real estate advice. However, we can touch on those topics. Mm. I'm just not a pro, so you need to seek yeah. <laughs> professional advice yeah. for that. But what it is, it's an opportunity to ask a woman who's done this, and I have half men and half uh, women clients, so yeah. it's not specific yeah. just to women, but how did you do it? Yeah. What, are you, what is life like on a daily basis? What yeah. are the general costs? Um, yeah. What do you think of this region versus that? Mm. And uh, so I'm able to get in depth with either three to five of the big questions that this client would have for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. And anything I can't answer, I research mm -hmm. and follow up. And then the other nice thing is because I've built a nice roster of resources for myself, people that I have vetted, that I would feel comfortable, you know, recommending to you, mm -hmm. that's what I do for my clients as well. So they get access to my sort yeah. of, you know, a list. So if someone's even think, just thinking about it, they could buy, say, an hour with you and you yeah. could, you, you, you have a pre-questionnaire, don't you? Yes. You send them with the biggest questions they want to ask. Yes. And then you have an hour and 
their questions might be, well, where do I start? And you could give them the names of some resources. Right, and um, exactly, and I can give them yeah. the, you know, especially if they're coming from the US, you know, the steps, I have some documents, the steps they need mm -hmm. to follow to get the short-term visa in order to get the longer-term mm -hmm. residency, you know, all of those things. But you and would then, direct them to the legal professionals who would provide those services. Yes, yeah. so to my migration assistant, or now yeah. I have an amazing attorney group mm -hmm. that I've been working with, and they are phenomenal. I would recommend, yeah. you know, I'd recommend them to anyone. Yeah. So, but those were hard won resources because through trial and error, oh, yeah. you, I had to find, hard. yeah, I've yeah. had to find people. And so now I have that and for, you know, for a nominal fee. And then because it's been so popular, my clients that have signed up have chosen to do an additional follow one or two follow, follow up mm. session so I can help them as they're in their progress, um, mm. you know, along the path. Uh, whether, like for instance, I have a client now, I've done two sessions with her and she will be moving soon. So yeah. she'll be here to visit down here in Stubal. She and I will spend some time together looking at the Fantastic. region. And, yeah. Yeah. So would you say it's almost, almost like a counseling? You know, it service? is, yeah. it is. It's like a, it's like a relocation counseling is yeah. what it's like. Yeah. So the relocation counseling. I, like I know, yeah. right? I mean, that's really what it branded, is. Yeah. I know. There you go. Well, right. Branding your business. Now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's a relocation um, counseling business. But it's you know, and I, but I say, and I think because it's obviously a little more friendly, I say it's an opportunity for conversation. Yeah. Is what it is. Yeah. And because I know when I was first doing this and looking at all the options, and yes, it can you find a multitude of resources online? You can. Some more reputable. Than others. others, and if you've got the time to and spend, and got the time, but I've laser focused in on yeah. these things and pulled up the cream of mm. what I think is the most useful for people. So. Super. So we will link to mm -hmm. that in the description Definitely. below, along with the previous video we've done about your first move. You know, first moving right. to Portugal. We did that about a year ago. And, um, and even the van video, what the heck, the so they can video. see the trajectory. Yeah, the trajectory, <laughs> although of course you've now sold Millie, haven't uh, you? Yes, Millie's have. gone. Yes. Yeah. Everything's been liquidated for the most part in the US, which yeah. is good. Yeah, cool. Excellent. Right, well I think it's about time we went and hit Stubal. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, now go. that the sun's finally come now out. Now the sun's come out again. <laughs> yeah, go down to the waterside. Yeah, that and, sounds yeah, great. That get something to eat. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, yeah, so thanks for watching. As I say, if you do want to find out a little bit more about mm -hmm. moving to Portugal, check out the link in the description below to Shana's So You Want to Move to Portugal. And we'll put my Instagram too. I'm not, I'm not on uh, social media much. I try to limit that, but I yeah. do post to Instagram so they can so follow my daily life. Just day-to-day -day <laughs> life about uh, the food. Yeah. And the food, food and, and coffee, coffee and, and, and yeah, whatever else, people and, and art. Street yeah. art, yeah. architecture. Yeah. yeah, it's a fantastic place. Okay, lovely. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. As ever, folks, if you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already. And it just leaves me to say from Shana and from me, thanks, thanks for, for tuning, tuning in. in. She's very good, isn't she? I She's this good. Down. You got it down to the good. You, you're very good. You're professional. You thanks. Are. Thanks. I could take over this channel. No, you couldn't. Oh, okay. No. Sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs>